Karatele Sakutashi la Hase Toya Tekase Fam Brosha Kalande la Vusela Kiandolese Katsakale Sakole Shakute Abasate One time I was in a meeting and I shouted at people like this and the power of God hit them all, they flew through the air and it cleared the road that I wanted cleared. And I think the apostle, the pastor didn't understand that. He was a little bit like, whoa, this guy is a, is a wild man. Yeah, I am. It's okay for me. Praise the Lord. Isaac, 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 come here. Stand here. Somebody stand behind him. Just stand right here, right here. Somebody stand behind him. Ushers, ushers. We need ushers. People that can catch. It's a hard floor. Somebody that, are you, you, are you okay? You got it? Father Shakare Tele say, lift your hands, man of God. Lift your hands, man of God. Yeah. Shakare say, Tola Hase, Tala Hase, Tola Kosa, Tala Hase. Sakalata. While you were speaking, while you were speaking, I, the presence of God came all over me as soon as you stood up here. And the Lord began to speak to me about you. And he said, tell him this, that, uh, that your days of fighting simple, stupid battles are over. And God, no, you don't have to clap. Wait, wait till I'm finished. And the Lord says, I'm going to cause you now to rise, my son even by revelation that you'll receive from me to teach the world, to teach the body of Christ. Even other countries will open to you. I hear the Congo calling for you. I hear Uganda calling for you. I hear Tanzania calling for you and other nations and other East African, maybe Zambia, places like that. You're going to go, Malawi. You're going to go to places and have, begin to have crusades because the flow of the miraculous is going to begin to increase upon you. And the Lord says, my son, Satan has made people to hate you in your coming up. Am I right? And they fought you and they cursed you and they talked bad about you. God says, all of that I'm taking in my hand and taking it and throwing it into the abyss. And those that have stood against you, says the Lord, are going to become as nothing. They'll disappear. Here's the verse of scripture, Isaiah 41, 11. Those that hate you and are incensed against you for whatever reason. God says they will become as nothing and you'll look for them and not find them again. And those that continue to strive, they will even perish. Number one, they'll disappear. Number two, you'll look and never see them again. Number three, if they want to continue to mess with you, they can fall down and not get up again. The Lord says, get ready, son, for the elevation. Even your speech pattern is going to change. God says, I'm going to make you a master of the English language. I see now. You got to listen to me. You got to, I'm not a novice. I'm a general. I've been all over planet Earth with these blessed feet. And I carried my suede Italian shoes to wear, to put them on. I wear my comfortable shoes out in this crazy place. But I put them on on the platform, and then I put them back in the bag. But these feet right here have stood upon all six continents of the world. 33 countries, 32 or 33 countries now in the world. And I preach and prophesy to millions of people. And I've been doing this for a few minutes. I know, I know what I'm talking about. And every time I give this advice to someone, they never listen. They never get it. But God says he wants you to speak very clear English. And your speech pattern and the revelation is going to flow through you. God says gong where you are will become a small thing. And I also saw people around you in some neighboring property where your, where your church is. You know, I don't know you, but I saw the vision. Some people that are hurling things against you and your church, they don't want you there. Maybe it's even some from the other religion. I don't know who they are, but somebody, something like that. God says, don't worry about it because I'm gonna, when I lift you, everything will begin to work out. The land that you need, the building that you need. And the Lord says, son, if you can receive this, I will have you have a place where you can seat at least 1,000 people in the building. Everybody lift your hands. And God says, miracles of healing. People will bring cripples to you. People will bring the dying and the disease to you. And just with a word, you'll speak. Because even as you spoke here, that you covet that anointing. 
God says, I'm going to answer by fire. And Kenya needs some real miracle workers. The Lord says, many have misunderstood you. They didn't understand your heart. But God says, in you, in your heart, is the heart of a pure man. And the fire is coming. Kashile, Faratere, Kadasendo, She. The fire, the fire, the fire of lifting up, of elevation. The Lord says, get ready. You're going to begin to see my hand lifting you. Fire upon you. Fire upon you. Let him go. Let him go. Put him down. Put him down. Fire. The Holy Ghost. And that is done in the name of Jesus. Now you can clap if you like. It's okay. If not, it's okay too. I don't mind. Hallelujah. Let me do something crazy in Nairobi. K for crazy. Not C, but K for Kenya. K crazy in Nairobi. All right, let me rebuke. I'll do this for a reason. Let, let me call everybody by their first names. Was it Patrick? Patrick? Where's Patrick? Patrick, thank you. And uh, what is your first name again? Joseph, yes. And Esther, yes? And your husband's first name is what? Joel. Yeah, and uh, okay, we'll get to know each other more. You guys can take me to lunch. Find a good place. I want to eat some good food. It's hard to find in Nairobi, but I believe you can figure that out. And Isaac and me, I'm Thomas. Okay, let's forget about the titles for a minute. I, it's okay to give titles. I know one man was called Archbishop by somebody. Take your seats. And uh, I thought, Archbishop of what? I've been to his church. You can't even film a proper video in there. It's so squeezed and unorganized, you know. Praise the Lord. But he's archbishop. Let me tell you a real archbishop. It's my friend Harrison Nanga, who wrote the, the foreword to this book, my book. And he published this book and sowed it as a seed and paid for it. The great archbishop, who has the largest church in Kenya right now. He has hundreds of branches. He has... More than 12,000 people in, in a single service now in his church down the road over here on Sunday morning. That's a real, that's a real one. So you want to say archbishop? I would say that's an archbishop. First, he was an evangelist and traveling man. Then he became a pastor teacher. Yeah. Then he was raised to be an apostle and then bishop and now archbishop. Lift your hands. So don't be afraid. To, and he doesn't mind. He wouldn't mind if you called him Harrison. I, if you said, hi, Harrison, he'd be like, he'd smile at you because he's a made man. Praise the Lord. You call me prophet, Dr. Thomas, call me by my last name. In Africa, people call me by my last name. They say, hey, Manton. I'm like, what? In America, if you did that, you'd catch a beating, okay? It's very rude to call someone by their last name. It means you hate them, you want to fight, you're, like you're cursing at them. But here it's like, we have so many names. Hello, my name, the testimony. Hello, my names are Helen. No, dear. Your name is Helen, not your names are Helen. So we have some name, many names, yes? But you could call me whatever you want. Even if you call me something bad, guess what? I don't care. How do you say it, Nairobi? Me, I don't care. Me, I don't know. Me, I don't care. Me, myself, I don't care. Lift your hands. You're looking at me strange. What's up with you people? Are you hearing me? Praise the Lord. Just be the servant of God. Be the son of God that God's ordained. Forget about everything else. Lift your hands. I want to prophesy. Don't look for the honor, the Lord says. Let the honor look for you. Oh, hallelujah. Because when I make you, and I've made you, says the Lord, even when you're tired, and you're not even looking for it, men will still honor you. Even when it irritates you, they'll chase you. Like the paparazzis that chase the celebrities. They don't want to be bothered. Leave me alone. Can I ever have any peace? It'll be like that. It'll become too much because of my hand upon you. The Lord says, you don't have to look for it. Let it look for you. And these are going to be the days of serious elevation for people that I have made on the backside of the desert says the Lord. I'm going to raise my sons and daughters. And God says don't be afraid also to be very distinct and unique uh, and different than everybody else because the Lord says I'm going to cause 
my favor to raise the ones I've ordained. Don't forget I said in my word, I'm the one who sets up kings and puts down others. The Lord says, get to learn the principles of how to build an organization, but never be jealous of one who's done it. Lift your hands. If you can learn, I tell you, I just found this in my book. And this is in the prophecy right now. I'm flowing. Page 37 in this great book that I, God had me write. I, I wrote the word, a subcategory called order. And the Lord said to me, organization is the key to increase revenues. Increase operations come through order. And like my good, my dear friend departed to heaven, Dr. Miles Monroe used to say, he said, uh, elevation doesn't come from... Uh, Prayer alone, it comes from management. Lift your hands. Can I prophesy to people? And this has been the cry of my heart, the burden of my heart. The, more, the Lord says the more organized you can become, the more you can be, do, and have. Someone's going to make a note of this later, and I'm just writing another point for my next, one of my next books. The more organized you can become, the more you can be, do, and have. Let me tell you what the Lord is saying these days through me, to me. And through me, he's talking to individuals. I had to get their lives to a powerful place. We can pray. We can pray all day and all night about the nation, but still our life is a mess. And we can't get to where we want to get to. And then God can't even use us as much as he wants to. And he looks at us and goes, oh my he can't say, oh, my God, because he's God. Can God say, oh, my God? No, we say, oh, my God. But God can't say, oh, my God. OMG. He could say, oh, that's me. Wait a minute. I can't use that one. He looks and he shakes his head and he says, oh, my beloved child, if you could only understand what it takes to build what you want to see built. What I want to do through you, if you could only understand. And the Lord says, uh, yeah. It's time to learn. Give ear to understanding. Give your heart to knowledge. Hear the instruction of a father. I find myself everywhere I'm going, I'm speaking to people like a coach, like a mentor, like a trainer, like a, like a leader, like a visionary leader who's helping to raise people up because I want people to get it. What, what will actually increase you. So no longer, lift your hands. You, you don't like teaching, you don't like this, you, like, you want to hear about spiritual things. Lift your hands. This is very spiritual. If you can get your life in working order, then God will begin to take you to the next step, the next step, the next step, and the next step. For what purpose is it all for anyway? It's to the glory of God that we build the kingdom and advance the kingdom. But you can't do it when everything's in disorder and disarray. God is the God of order. He put the sun 93 million miles from the earth. If it came a little closer, the earth would burn. If it went a little further away, the earth would freeze. In this place called outer space, the solar system that the earth is revolving around with the nine planets in the Milky Way galaxy. Everything has a place. You ever notice on the beach, you stand at the side of where the water comes and you can time with your tiptoes that your toes won't get wet watching the wave. You can know exactly how far it's going to come and exactly where it's going to stop. God made that. The tsunami that I was just looking at the documentary again, happened on December 26, 2004 in Asia, it, the tectonic plates in the earth uh, uh, just got disrupted. And this earthquake happened in the sea and it caused the water to come and kill nearly a quarter of a million people across uh, Thailand and, and Mal Malaysia where, I, where I've been. The island where the people died in Malaysia, I've been there. Miami Bay, in Penang, northern Malaysia. And uh, 
Sri Lanka over there and all around. And that water even came to Kenya. Do you know that? The tsunami even came and hit the coast of Kenya. Hit the, the Indian Ocean. It came all the way across. Why? Because something went out of order. And so it is in your life. When things are out of order, God can't get the best thing that he wants done, done. Lift your hands. Let me prophesy to you. Because I'm doing it. You can have so much revelation. You can have such a great prayer life. But still you're living in poverty. You can have so much going on. I don't, I don't have time to get into more teaching than this. But I'll do it in, in another, another session sometime, somewhere. But you can have so much going on in your world uh, in, in a certain arena, but it won't produce growth. And the men that figured it out are the ones that have the greatest things going. I want to tell you there's a flip of the order coming in the church in Kenya. There's a flip of things coming where people that have been in obscurity they're going to get themselves together. And God says, as much as you can work on yourself is how much you can rise to a new occasion. Lift your hands and pray with me right now. It's an individual thing. I'll give you scripture. Now, I can give you scripture all afternoon till this evening and not stop talking without even opening my blessed Bible here with my bookmarkers of Twiga and Chewy and the rest. Praise the Lord. Uh, African uh, bookmarks. I love them. So, my God, I have lions. I have all kinds of zebras. I, have, I mark my scriptures with those that I'm going to turn to. So without even opening this, just from memory, but in the book of Song of Solomon, chapter 1, there was a story of the one beautiful woman there. She says, I've been made keeper of the vineyard and I've worked hard there. But my, here's the, here's the catchphrase, but my own vineyard I've not kept. Lift your hands. Yes. And then the Lord began to say, I feel the anointing. Then the Lord began to say, I am the rose of Sharon. I'm the lily of the valleys. How organized they are. Remember when Jesus said, the flowers of the field, look at the beauty of these things. He said, can you make this? Can you by your worry or your toil even create something as great as this? I've done it. But, and, and he said, look how I raised King Solomon. And look how I raised Abraham. And look how I raised David. And look how I raised uh, Elijah. And look how I raised Job. You know, Job was a multi-billionaire. U.S. dollars. He had 3,000 camels, now he has 6,000. Some estimation was done that the camels, uh, the prized camels today in Saudi Arabia and the auctions, the markets that they have there, the festivals that they have there, some of those camels sell for millions of dollars now, that Job's camels alone were worth multiplied billions, not millions, billions with a B, of U.S. dollars. Lift your hands. That's trillions of shillings. And we call them our father. Our father David. How? Oh, stop. How do you know him? Can you relate? And can I tell you how Solomon became the richest king, the greatest king ever? Because he had a reference point. His father. His father David. He looked at his father David and he saw all the things that, that David achieved. And David taught him and put the spirit in him. Amen. To, raise, to be raised up to build something phenomenal. He had a reference point. And sometimes we look at all these churches. And we look around the church world, we have no reference point. I tell you, I love this. Yeah, Lord, thank you, I'll do it. Oh, wow. Remember the scripture in uh, uh, Malachi. I'll cause the fathers to come back to the children, the sons, and the sons back to the fathers, and the daughters. Why? To build something. To have a reference point. And when you see someone that's built something, don't hate them for it embrace it and say Lord, maybe i don't like them fully maybe i don't agree with everything about them but there's something they learned that i also need to know lift your hands lift your hands somebody knows something you don't know let's pray hallelujah let's pray come on just pray in the spirit get lost in the spirit you can sit 
Stay sitting down. It's okay. I can tell everyone to stand up, but you don't have to. Just, just get lost in the spirit for a minute and say, Lord, help me. Help me. Work with me. Work on me. Let me build. I'm responsible to be a builder like Nehemiah got the vision and the passion and he had to arise and build Nehemiah 2 17 to 20 and he said the God of heaven himself will prosper us let me tell you something about prosperity and wealth and provision when you have the vision of God God will begin to raise and elevate you and give you the provision let's pray for yourself right now pray for yourself pray for yourself this is my assignment here this afternoon from the Holy Ghost pray for yourself pray for your own life Pray for everything to be made excellent in your life. Everything to be perfected. Jesus said, I'm the one who perfects everything that concerns you. I'm the author and the finisher of your faith. Uh, everything good I've begun in you, I'll perform it. Uh, and to be not weary and well-doing, says the Lord, for you'll reap in due season if you don't faint. Uh, let me have my way in your world. Let me fix your world. And can I tell you, when you're frustrated, when you feel sad, when you feel depressed, when you feel irritated, when you feel uh, overtired and overworked and underpaid and underappreciated and all these things, it's a time when God is put, trying to birth you into something new. God says, stop looking to other people. Look to me. Stop looking to man. Because cursed is the man, Jeremiah 17, who trusted man, but I'm the but blessed be the one who trusted me. God says, I, I'm the author and finisher of your faith. I'm the one who will bless you if you can believe me. Father, this is the day when you're going to take people by the hand and begin to teach them how to walk to the next step. Every calling is valid. Every gift is valid. Every talent is valid. Everything that's to be done is supposed to happen now. It's not supposed to happen later. Jesus, you said, redeem the time for the days are evil. And you said the night comes when no man can work anymore. So work while it's day right now. We have limited time. We have to move. We have to move fast. And Father, I prophesy on the good people. I don't prophesy this on the evil people because they're being judged. But the Lord says, I'm, 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 I'm speaking over the good people. People that are not rebels and evil and liars and cheaters and living all kinds of wrong ways. God, but God says, I have my elect. I have my chosen ones who suffered much and yet have reaped little. They've sown much and reaped little. But the Lord says, this is going to be the day of the harvest. And I'm going to begin to cause my favor to shine upon the ones I love. The Lord says the spirit of acceleration, excellence, elevation, illumination, enlightenment, new things is coming upon those I've ordained. And God says you're not going to have to wait a long time to see the fulfillment of what I promised. God said these are the days of restoration. Yes, I preached this on Sunday. By the way, my YouTube channel, let me make sure I give you my website so you can watch uh, these things that the Lord has been speaking on, on our YouTube channel, on our Facebook and all that, and my website. But uh, the, the, the Lord said, the Lord said, these are the days of restoration. These are the days of manifestation. And these are the days when we're going to have the best relationships. Lift your hands. The best of the best of the best. The best of the best of the best of everything. I, God, I, have, I made an acronym for that, and I'm writing another book on that. T-B-O-T-B. The best of the best. T-B-O-T-B. -B. The best of the best. The Lord wants us to have the best of everything. The best of friends. The best of success. The best of help. The best of equipment. The best of money. The best of open doors. The best of everything. And the Lord says, that's not for somebody else. Uh, that's for me. Uh, and that's for you. Come on, go ahead and clap now. It's all right. Hallelujah. Come on, give Jesus a shout on that and say, Lord, I receive it. I receive it for me in my house. In the name of Jesus. I know I'm deep. I'm too deep for some people. You, you, you listen to shallow preachers for too long. It's time to listen to me some more. Praise the Lord. All right, thomasmanton.com. You got my name, T-H-O-M-A-S. Jesus, John chapter 20, and Jesus saith unto Toma, Thomas, you say Thomas, or, you know, Thomas, Thomas. You know how to spell Thomas, right? T-H-O-M-A-S. My last name is M-A-N, like man. I'm a man, right? Manton, T-O-N, thomasmanton.com. And all of the links are there. You can join our YouTube page, our Facebook page. Praise the Lord. 
Lift your hands. Our phone numbers are there. If you want to sow a seed and become a partner of the work and you feel God talking to you about that, you can sow. Uh, our phone number is there, 706-164-191. You can have that also. The Lord bless you. If we have a minute, if you want to talk to me and say hi to me, I'll be glad to pray for you. Uh, we don't have the time right this minute because of the rush program, and it's okay. But thank God we're in the city, and we're lifting up the power of God here. But how many receive what I said? How many understand what I'm saying? If you don't rise, who's going to do it for you? If you don't catch the vision that God has and work the thing, that you become more better at you being you in the presence of God, in the ways of God, who's going to do it? Lift your hands and say, Lord, I repent for wasting time. I repent for building something for everybody else, but I didn't build my own. The Lord says now it's time to build your own, build your own work. Now, if you're called to be a part of a ministry and that's your God assignment to serve in a house with a servant of God, then that's your mission. That's your house. You understand? So everybody has a different calling from God. And another thing I just want to end with this. I want to say that you're going to know exactly what it is God has ordained for you, exactly, specifically, what God is directing you to do in this day and hour, in Jesus' name. Do you receive it? Let's clap to Jesus. God bless you. I'll see you all again real soon. Amen, amen. Clap for Hallelujah. No, clap for Jesus, not for me. Thank you. Give Jesus all the glory, please. Please do it.